I'd like to start by thanking the organizers, as well as my co-authors, uh, Thomas Cochran, Terry Lyons, and Emmanuel Paris Aribas. So the title of this talk is Detection on Anomalous Streams. So just by way of overview, um, the task that we're dealing with is as follows. Given a corpus of observations that we deem normal in some sense, what we'd like to do is determine if a new observation is um, normal or it's anomalous. So this is a, a common machine learning problem. And to this end, we propose a um, simple but powerful method for detecting anomalies when our objects of interest are vector valued observations. This is a general um, approach that one might apply to anomaly detection. Um, but there's also the task, which is more particular, which deals with detecting anomalies where our objects of interest are streams. And this is where path signatures um, are a very powerful method of representing streams. And therefore, we can use um, path signatures as our feature representations if we wanted to do anomaly detection. So the task there would be to decide if a given stream is um, normal or anomalous. And there are some experiments which we've done to this end. So there's a flavor of the talk that I would like to give, which is perhaps more high level than the preceding talks. And that's by a necessity. My background is more of a practitioner than a mathematician. But nonetheless, I very much hope that you uh, will feel encouraged to read our preprint, which is on the archive if you wish to do so. So the background to this is that anomaly detection is a problem with very broad applications. Consider, for example, applications in medicine or financial fraud, cybersecurity, there are numerous applications. And at the same time, there's been relatively little work on deciding whether a uh, entire time series is anomalous. But nonetheless, that's of great interest uh, in various engineering applications. If you consider, for example, the fields which I just mentioned. So how do we go about this? Well, in anomaly detection in general, one approach involves um, using some notion of distance metric. So this is a common approach in anomaly detection. We want to decide if our given object is proximate to the existing objects, which we consider uh, normal. Um, so then we need to ask the question, what is a useful metric? So how do we go about that? And this is one of the questions that we aim to address uh, with our work. So the way we go about this um, is as follows. So we take a probability measure on some vector space, and then we consider the dual. Um, so if we map our observations into that dual, what we do is we take the, um, the, the dual mapped observation x, and take the supremum over that, where we're taking the uh, covariance um, and restricting it to be less than or equal to one. So one way to conceptualize is that is that if we've got our vector valued observations. Uh, we transform this to require that the observations are spherical. So the covariance is, is spherical. Um, and this is what we term the variance norm. Another word for this or term for this is the Mahalanobis norm associated with the measure mu. And it has various properties that are desirable, that make it desirable as some sort of measure of non-conformity, as a measure of unusualness if we've got an observation. And one of these is that it's a finite on linear span of supported mu and infinite outside. Um, and secondly, it's uh, well-defined if the measure has finite second moments, and in particular, if we're dealing with empirical measures. So that's the case in particular where we've got a machine learning application and we have various observations. So this is an approach which has been applied relatively widely. And um, one could ask the question, why not use this approach? So there are um, disadvantages to using the variance norm directly. When I say directly, I mean, consider the variance norm of the object. We're simply measuring the distance of the object with respect to the mean. Now this approach starts to break down when we go into a higher dimension. So if we consider um, a vector space, which has a uh, very large dimensionality, and we will end up with um, a distance, which is 
um, is not suitable. I and mean, we have um, norms which become very large, essentially. So rather than take the, um, the variance norm, we propose instead to take what we term the conformance of x to mu. So we're taking the support of mu and uh, determining the infimum of the um, of the variance norm that we can compute within all our points. So conceptually, what this is like is taking the um, observations that we have and computing the minimum distance to the um, with respect to the observation that we have. So this is different to the uh, typical approach of simply comparing to the mean. And it turns out that there is in uh, fact a, a very good theoretical mo uh, motivation for this. And I understand this is the Tsiolshin Sudikov Borel isoparametric inequality, which has as a corollary that a new member of the corpus will be far away from most members of the cor corpus. But we can usually find one object that is proximate. So this goes back to this conceptualization, which I mentioned. We're taking the entirety of our corpus, we're determining, determining which uh, observation is most proximate. And we take that to be our conformance when we compute our distance measure. So this is essentially our approach that we propose for detecting anomalies. But what we want to do is we want to compute, um, determine anom anomalies when our objects of interest are streams. So I'm going to talk a bit about that now. So just um, by way of definition, we've talked about paths, but to be a bit more precise, when we talk about streams, what we're dealing with are um, objects where we've simply got um, um, a sequence of, of points, and these points are uh, members of some um, of some set. For example, the canonical example would be a person writes um, a digit using a pen. Okay, so in that case, we've got a two-dimensional stream, and because it, Typically, we will be stuck. We will be sampling the points um, at discrete times. We end up with a sequence of, um, of of x y coordinates, essentially. So this is an example of a two dimensional stream. And when we talk about streams, what's important to note is that these are more general than um, time series because we um, may have um, a different spacing in in the, in the points in our, time, in, our in our streams. Um, so we need not um, have streams which have the same number of points, they need not be, need be evenly spaced. The spacing can also differ among streams. And if we want to compute um, a path from a stream, then we need to apply some sort of method of uh, interpolation. And that's the step that we compute before determining the signature. Okay, so if we have a stream, how do streams then relate to our method that we, I, I just talked about, which is the method for uh, determining, uh, determining anomalies. So if we let uh, C be a finite corpus of streams of data, so these are the observations of the normal observations as if, you, uh, as if it were. And what we will do is we will take this signature of order N to be our vector valued representation of those streams in our corpus. And then we can take the signature of order n as some sort of empirical measure. And there's a relationship between the signature and, and the um, variance norm by way of the expected signature. And it turns out that that relationship is relatively straightforward. I'm um, taking a new um, observation, which we represent in terms of its signature. It turns out that you can represent the uh, variance norm in terms of the inner product of, of this signature and this matrix um, A. And the matrix A um, has entries which are determined by the expected signature and the shuffle product of, of, these, of these bases. So we have essentially a method that um, allows us to represent the objects of interest, which are streams, and convert them to vector valued observations, and then determine anomalies by way of the variance norm. And then the method that we actually use for determining if, a if a, an object is an outlier or not is the uh, conformance distance as previously defined. Um, so um, I'll talk a bit about the evaluation of, 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 of our approach now. So we've um, run our method against um, 
a number of data sets, and this uh, relies on partitioning a set of observations, which are labeled either uh, normal or anomalous. And out of these, we take um, some um, subset to be our training corpus. And then we take it as our testing data, the remainder of the data. So that will comprise both normal and anomalous data. And what I'm going to talk about briefly are three different experiments that we run. Um, so the first is, a, is an experiment based on handwritten digit data. The second involves marine vessel traffic data. And the third is a collection of univariate um, uh, time series that, uh, data, which are um, they have been they've been applied quite widely as a as a as a standard benchmark a set of data sets um, for univariate um, time series classification. Um, so the pen digits data set consists of um, ten thousand so instances of hand addition digits from forty four subjects. So this is um, essentially two dimensional uh, stream data, and we take. Um, for each of the possible digits, uh, normal to be um, one of the digits between one, zero and nine. And we take a subset of those data points as our um, training corpus. And then we evaluate our method by computing the, um, uh, the, the, the uh, conformance uh, distances with respect to the training corpus for the testing data, which consists of both the normal and anomalous data. And that gives us then a score for each of the objects, which is a, a stream. And we aggregate those scores together and compute a performance uh, measure. So the performance measure that we consider here is the receiving op uh, receiver operating characteristic area under the curve. So on the pen digits data set, um, we can visualize the uh, empirical cumulative probability uh, distributions that we obtain for the normal and anomalous data. So in our method, um, if one of the parameters that we can tune, a hyperparameter, is the signature order. And what we would expect there is that as we increase the signature order, our method is more powerful and they, uh, becomes better able to distinguish between the normal and the uh, anomalous data. So that's exactly what we see here. So if we increase the order signature order from one to five, um, the uh, distributions become better separated. Um, and we also see uh, there's, there's a heavy, heavier tail for the anomalous observations uh, for the uh, case where the signature order is five. And this is also illustrated by the receiver operating characteristic area under the curve we obtain for increasing signature orders. So as we increase the signature order, the uh, vector valued feature representations become higher dimensional, but we'll also be able, uh, better able to distinguish between the normal and the anomalous um, objects. And the second data set we consider is a, is a real world data set um, that is, uh, representative of ship movements. So sh the ship movements can be recorded using what's known as the automatic identification system. So that's essentially a radio based um, technology, uh, which takes the sh ship's position as determined using GPS and transmits it to a base station. So to make this into a, an, anomaly, an anomaly detection task, what we did was we designated the um, anomalous class to be ships of a um, given length. So here less than 50 meters and the um, normal class is the sh is, uh, consists of ships with length exceeding 100 meters. So here are first some examples of uh, ship uh, movement paths. So these are the paths that we obtain for um, relatively short vessels and relatively long vessels. Um, so on the top, we have the relatively long vessels so ship length exceeding 100 meters. And on the bottom, we have the relatively short vessels, ship length um, less than 50 meters. Um, so by visual, expect, uh, visual inspection, we would expect to have some ability to distinguish between um, the vessels um, based on the shape of these, of these paths. Um, and that's exactly what we see. So as quantified using the receiver operating characteristic area and the curve, um, we 
get some ability to distinguish between the short and the long vessels. And that depends on the length of the path, obviously. So this uh, experiment that we ran tries to evaluate the effect of the path length on ability to discriminate between the short and the uh, uh, long vessels. Um, so what we've done is we've taken the entire path that we obtain for a given vessel, we split it into these substreams, and we use those substreams to, to, to perform the anomaly detection. So what we see is as the uh, substream length increases, uh, we are better able to distinguish between the uh, normal and the anomalous vessels. I'll say a bit about our final experiment. So the final experiment is based on the UEA and UCR data set. So this is a collection of 28 univariate um, time series data sets. And we applied, applied our method uh, in comparison to a state of the art method, which is based on so-called shapelets. And here we also consider the effect of introducing um, um, contaminations into our into our training corpus. So this is in a, in a, in a real world situation, often the case that we don't have a, a pure data set of, of, of normal observations, but rather it's contaminated some, to some extent. And what we see is that compared to the, um, the, the, the baseline, we're in fact able to outperform in several instances where um, in, in, in previous observations, it was thought that the, um, the data wouldn't be suitable necessarily for anomaly detection. So this is encouraging that our approach is relatively general purpose. It encodes no information about uh, domain specific knowledge, but nonetheless, we're able to outperform or perform very well compared to a, a baseline state-of-the-art approach. So based on this Cyrilson, Sudakov, uh, Borel isoperimetric inequality, we introduced this notion of a conformance as a method for anomaly detection. And we can use uh, signatures as vector-valued features to do anomaly detection on, on streams. Our approach is generally applicable in both univariate and multivariate settings. And because we deal with streams, we need not have evenly spaced points in our data. They may vary across streams and they also need not be of equal length. We can apply stream transformations to modify the representational properties. And this can be particularly useful um, for the task, as mentioned, for example, the ship um, anomaly detection uh, task. Um, experimental re results are favorable, favorable and they suggest that our approach performs very well in several application domains, despite not encoding any information about domain knowledge. Thank you very much for listening.